Have you ever disagreed with someone on an issue that you both felt strongly about? Maybe things got heated. You kids these days, you just got no common sense. Well, I tell you what, you're just a bunch of buffoons. No, you're a buffoon. <laughs> or people got emotional. No one here understands me. <laughs> or maybe your mind just went blank and you just started making stuff up. Well, did you know that 120% of scientists disagree with you? Even if you're not on a debate team, Odds are, you're eventually going to have a conversation with someone with different opinions and views than you. Rather than rushing into an argument, today we're giving you four tips on how to handle yourself in a disagreement. Number one, before you engage, decide your end game. You don't always have to jump into a debate or a discussion. Choose wisely. But if you do decide to engage with someone with a different perspective, know your end game. Are you trying to change their mind? Or are you trying to reach clarity over agreement? Sometimes the goal is just to discover truth, not beat your opponent or vent your emotions. The goal is also not to just show off and beat people over the head with your superior logic. Recognize your opportunity to engage with someone who has an opposing view and use it as a chance to hear their perspective and come closer to discovering what is true. Or maybe even change a mind or two. Number two, listen before you talk. In a disagreement, it can be tempting to dominate the conversation with every thought that comes into your head. After all, don't they care what you think? I'd love to know what your thoughts and opinions are. This doesn't usually happen. If they're like most people, they care more about what they think and making sure they get their own points across. Get it through your head! So let them. The first thing to do in a disagreement is to listen carefully to what the other person has to say. So don't just sit there quietly and think about what you're going to say next. How do you like that statistic? <laughs> What about the turtles? I wasn't even talking about the turtles. Are you even listening? You will get a lot farther if you build trust with the other person and get a sense of where they are coming from. They are more likely to want to understand where you are coming from. Remember, you're trying to discover what is true. So there is genuine value in listening to their perspective. You may learn something you didn't know. This means that you have to try to clearly understand the meaning of the words they use. Ask honest, clarifying questions like, So what do you mean by that word? Or, so do you mean to say that this is your opinion on the subject? When you've heard them out and you're ready to respond, it is also important to define the words you use so they also clearly understand what you mean. So when I say this word, this is actually what I mean. Oh, I gotcha. Wow. Many times people argue only to discover that they don't really disagree. They just mean different things by the words they use. Asking clarifying questions shows the other person that you are genuinely listening and eliminates the pitfall of simple misunderstandings. It helps to approach the conversation with the goal of clarity over agreement. Even if you don't end up agreeing, at least you'll both walk away with the clear understanding of the other view. And that's a win for everyone. Number three, assess for logical consistency. The next thing to do is to assess the validity of the statements made by the person speaking. If you're not sure if something that they've said is true or false, ask them how they know what they stated is true. Do not ask in an accusatory way. Where's the proof for all those opinions you have, buddy? If they feel that you are attacking them or trying to prove them wrong, they will respond defensively and things will get ugly. <coughs> the point is not to attack but to discover what is true. Once you know where they're getting their information, you can assess whether it's a good source or not. Usually people claim to have knowledge based on three sources, reason or logic, experience or intuition, which includes emotion and trust of others. Many people believe things to be true, not because they have proof, but because they want it to be true. I want it! It's okay. This is what you call confirmation bias. Basically looking for things to confirm what you already believe and ignoring things that might say otherwise. I believe that all clothes are red. Evidence. It's important to drill down to the facts and see if the other person's view aligns with the best evidence. If it doesn't, you have found an inconsistency or a rhetorical fallacy. Aha! Here are a couple of fallacy examples. Non sequitur. The conclusion does not logically come from the reasons or evidence. I know that all clothes are red because my mom's face turns red after talking to me. False dilemma. A choice between two things when more choices exist. There's only two colors in this world to choose from. Yellow and blue. <laughs> what about red? That's not a color. <laughs> 
These are not the only ones, but it's important to practice spotting these fallacies, not only to strengthen your own debating skills, but more importantly, to ensure that you yourself are not using them in your own reasoning. Before you engage in debate, make sure you can justify your own statements as being true and defensible. Which brings us to number four. Number four, be prepared to defend your view. It is important to know what you stand for, what you believe, and why. Once you know what you stand for, you should be able to present it in a compelling way. After the other person presents their view, you need to be prepared to present yours as a proper counter to their opinion. But it's not enough to simply say what you think. Here's what I think about it. <laughs> you need to be ready to defend it, but not attack the other person in the process. Make sure you are well informed and are able to back up your opinion. You can do this by citing data, statistical evidence, or anecdotal evidence that affirms your view or refutes theirs. The more you know about an issue, the easier it will be to give evidence right there during the conversation. And save yourself the frustration of thinking of the perfect response later in the shower. So for anyone watching who wants to be a master of navigating difficult conversations, here are some rapid fire additional tips. Watch out for pride both in yourself and in others. Many people will not budge on their stance even if you prove them wrong because of their pride. Don't be one of those people. Be open to changing your mind. Remember, you don't know everything and there's always something that you can learn from everyone. Don't be the guy that thinks he has everything figured out. No, nothing left to learn here. Uh -huh. Look for the truth and be willing to change your mind when you think you've found it. Try to find common ground where you can. Wow. Common ground. <laughs> Don't let emotions take over. Avoid name calling, referred to as ad hominem, and getting angry or hostile. You baboon! Your brain is the size of a chicky nuggy! Direct your words to the argument, not the person. Be gracious. Leave room for your opponent to exit the debate with some dignity. And leave the door of friendship open for future conversation. Don't just beat them into oblivion with the bat of logic. Wrong again, <laughs> and again, <laughs> and again! <laughs> Having a disagreement is inevitable, and it takes practice to present your views clearly and convincingly. But it's a skill worth having. Sharing what you believe in a compelling way is a talent that will pay off throughout your whole life. Just remember to be kind to yourself if you fail to change the other person's mind. And be kind to them if you succeed. You might just make a friend, or at least just not make an enemy. So let's recap. Number one, know the purpose of engaging in the argument. What's your end game? Two. Listen before you talk and clarify the meaning of key words. Number three, assess arguments with logic, not bias or emotion. Number four, be prepared to defend your view with evidence. Thank you for watching this how-to video for Breaker U. We hope you learned something new. Did yeah. you learn something new? Oh, I did. No. Why? That's Please not. like and share these videos. Be sure to watch these videos at PragerUKids.com. Oh, yeah. We'll see you next time. Who do you think is a better basketball it's, shot? It's clearly me. Uh, wow. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was close. Uh, okay. You didn't even stop. Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 Bunch of dweebs. You stop it! <laughs> <You> st <laughs> Why is my corn touching my green beans?